should bring them up that they should believe in themselves and their right and wrong instead of what the parents are going to impress upon them. So this list is just false bravado. I just said it as a joke. It's not. I mean, ninety percent of the things I say is a joke. I know people take it extremely seriously sometimes. But there's some solid parenting advice from Shah Khan. This is Mahek from Team Miss Malani, and we're in Dubai with the one man who. Never needs an introduction, Shah Rukh Khan. Welcome to Dubai. Thank you very much, Ms. Malani. Thank you, Mahek, for having me on the show. Um, before we start, I have to say, uh, I think you're the only human being in the world that could get me to work when I have three days left to deliver. <laughs> so, delivering Thursday, but as soon as I was told, can you interview Shah Rukh Khan? I was like, can I? <laughs> we can do this. No, so, stay you. in thank there. Thank you very much, and, uh, Mahek. No, I wish you all the best with your delivery, and uh, may you have the healthiest, happiest, most beautiful baby in the world. Thank you. That means a lot. No, it's and then take care, please. Yeah, rest of it. Thank you. So it's been a whirlwind for you the past few weeks of promotions for Rise, and I'm sure you've answered you have answered so many questions at length. So I'm gonna to try to stray away from that a bit, but one thing I really do want to touch upon is you've said in the past you're not so comfortable playing real life villains. As in a non-fictional villain. You know, you feel like no matter what you do, the character is going to be lovable. So you'd rather stay away from having people think that it's okay to do these negative things in real life. So fast forward a bit to Rais, and it is a, fict a fictitious character. And whatever little we've seen from the posters and the trailers, you look incredible. You always look good, but you just look hot. Like you actually just look, I think this might be your hottest look yet, which is ironic because you're playing a villain. So was Rais scripted as a lovable villain or has it become, has he become a lovable villain because Shah Rukh Khan is right? Uh, one, one thing, Meg, I think, you know, sometimes we, uh, uh, I'd, I'd be honest, I'd explain it a bit. I think uh, when we are playing, even within the parameters of commercial cinema, which normally people think don't have a head or tail, we just go ahead and do a story. I think uh, there is a lot that goes into any character to really define it as villain or uh, a hero. That happens actually in the absolutely commercial popular sense. You know, you'll have a good guy who's uh, squeaky clean. You know, does everything right. And he will come first in school and college and love his mother and be really the nicest guy possible in the world. And then you have the bad guy who's got a big mustache and has got thicker eyebrows and has an evil laughter. Uh, those are actually very animated or cartoon characters that you make, and they work. I mean, you know, in, in, uh, in Hollywood they've transported it to actually uh, Batman and Joker. Iron Man and the bad guy, and, and they're larger than life. But in regular films, anyway, I don't think uh, when you take a protagonist, uh, most writers, including myself as an actor, you know, there's always some good in a bad, and there's always some bad in a good. You can't be just extremes. So when you play roles like that, then uh, uh, inherently the character how you play it up is important. Not the story, perhaps. Not what happens. Uh, you know, that oh, he's in a bad world. There's no justification for it. But I think there are a few qualities that may stand out and you say, oh, he's a bad person, but there is something that you can look up to, or not even look up to, that was kind of okay about him. So race falls in that category, not because I'm playing. I think it was written as a character like that, who does his job, thinks business is, uh, you know, it's, it's a little like mafia, does business, nothing personal. Uh, but having said that, you know, you see the film, there's no justification trying to glorify him or anything bad about him, but somewhere you might, and that's, that's the open-endedness of a film like this, which is what it makes, uh, I think, very special. There is an open-endedness to it that you take away whatever you want to take away from it. We are not going to impress upon you that he's a nice guy and you should be like him. No. But, so we are very excited for the release. But let's, so let's fast forward to the release. It's the weekend of the release. You just woke up. And of course, the praise is pouring in. With that comes the critique. After so many years in the industry, whose praise is it that maybe you take to heart and it could change your day? Is it your kids? Is it the media? Is it your colleagues? Who's that one person who will say, you know, this praise or critique has affected my day? Or you're kind of done with that now after no, so many I, years? No, I haven't thought of that. I, I didn't like, uh, uh, kids are too close to me. Uh, family's too close, you know. So they obviously, uh, their whole uh, take on anything that I do uh, is, is with that pinch of being your own. So I, I can't take it to heart if they don't like something. I think they're being honest. And also when they praise me, my family is very clear that you know they're not like they're not my fans. They're my children, and uh, they're brought up like that. Um, on the other hand, uh, no, you know what happens is I've been in the business too long, really. I'm not taking away from the importance of uh, you know, 
critical evaluation of your work, people saying X, Y, and Z. But um, I don't know, I'm just too numb by making a film, having spent a year, year and a half mostly on it. Now it's out there in the public. More than the critique, I think what affects me is the responsibility of having to entertain people without fear every time. And it becomes very personal to me that if I, if I fail. And, uh, I, and the failure is more important than somebody coming and telling me, but you are fat or you are pathetic. I think just the, just the fact that I can get a lot of people to enjoy two and a half hours of their life when they watch the film uh, is, is more important to me. And uh, similarly, you know, when it succeeds, it just kind of makes me feel uh, really nice that look. And, and when I say success, it's not just the box office. There are different holes to fill in this box office. There's critical acclaim, there's awards. There's, you know, X, Y, Z, international, overseas, interior, exterior. It's never ending. I, I, I don't think about it. Just overall, I feel sometimes, okay, this film kind of did what it, I, I sort of know it, uh, where it's headed. I mean, I'd be kind of silly not to know uh, what the value of a film is. Uh, so it's more personal it's, than what anyone it's else It's extremely personal. It's just extremely very personal. personal. It does not mean it's self-obsessed. No, it's of course. Personal, yes. um, so one last question, because I think we're running out of time. I think all the interviews I've seen lately with you, everyone seems to love asking you about your daughter's dating life and what is your suggestion. And you've given a lot of, you know, this is what I ideally I like her boyfriend to be like, and some warnings to that boyfriend also, I think you've given. And I know when my dad used to do that, I'd kind of just roll my eyes and be like, okay, dad. So what's her reaction when she sees you say this in an interview or say, you know, these are the qualities that she come home and kind of say, just laugh, or is it just a joke at home now that? Papa's going to say that. Is, no, it's just false bravado. That's why I don't say it to her. I just said it. I mean, you guys listen to me so I can say it in an interview. But uh, I would never be able to tell my daughter, or my son for that matter, uh, what personal life to lead, who to date, who not to date, who to be with, who not to be. Um, unless they come and say, you know, Papa, this is an issue and I will find out this story. I've been, I'm extremely, I, I love them to death. But I'm extremely impersonal about their personal life. I think it's their duty. Sometimes so their mom will turn around and say, ask her, ask him. I don't. I've never done that. I knock on their door five times till they say, enter. I don't enter their rooms. I don't uh, look into their personal things. I have never ever in my life asked them a personal question. If they're going out, you know, sometimes they'll come and say bye. I'm awake till late. Sometimes I'll see them trudging in at 4 30 in the morning. And I don't ask them anything. Ever, ever, ever. And uh, if they come forward and say something, it's quite a problem for me because I have to find out the background because I'm so unaware and I think that's how children should be left. You should bring them up that they should believe in themselves and their right and wrong instead of what the parents are going to impress upon them. So this list is just false bravado. I just said it as a joke. It's not, I mean, 90% of the things I say is a joke. I know people take it extremely seriously sometimes. You know? But there are some solid parenting advice from Shah Khan, so I hope I, all I, the fathers I, out there are listening. I'll add to this. I would never hurt my children physically like some idiots believe on social media, oh he said this, uh, <laughs> if they are mean to a girl, no. And it's just a manner of speaking uh, and to try to explain to people. When you're having a baby, never raise your voice at them, never raise your hand, love them and hug them and cuddle them and they'll do back exactly the same. I, I have a big problem, my biggest problem is I go home and I have three different sizes and shapes jumping on me at the same time. And that's difficult. Man. It's probably the best feeling. Best feeling. So, I'm looking forward to that feeling. But thank you, Megan. All the best. Thank Marshall. you. And then, uh, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll find out. Yes. Baby's born. And yes. Next time I will bring him along. Yeah. Okay. But thank you and good luck. And we <coughs> cannot wait. I've actually booked my tickets for the midnight show before I deliver the next day. So we cannot it's wait to see it. Much, yeah. Uh, yeah. Before, before, what? Twenty minutes before the climax is a fight. So just close my eyes. Pull, pull, pull your baby's ears tight. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for that. And we love you. And do you have to say anything to your fans at Miss Malani? Thank you very much, Miss Malani. As always, uh, all the ladies at Miss Malani, I like you. It's very nice. Oh, we love you. Nice oh, we love you. We love you. Men in this group. So we just want more <laughs> wonderful. More to girl power. More to Miss Malani. And to everybody who works. Or anyone the boys also. Thank you.